Hello! So, Carinado have finally released the Cessna 182RG Mark II in Microsoft Flight Simulator. So we're going to take it for a flight today. I've been waiting for this aeroplane for a little while. I think it's probably going to be... I'm kind of preempting this, but I think it's going to be the favourite Cessna of most people inside the simulator in pretty short order until, you know, some of the steady level ones come out. But um, it's very, very good. As you can see, the the modelling of the materials and the 3D structures is as you come to expect from Carinado. It just looks photographic. It's very, very good indeed. So if we go and jump inside the aeroplane, you can see the modelling inside is very good as well. We're going with the black face shirt today on this livery. So each livery has different colour schemes and there are many liveries that come with the, the package. So you can see, in common with all of the Carinados, the quality of the modelling of the instruments and the controls is absolutely first class. And it's got that kind of lovely patina to most things. They kind of they looked used. The aircraft looks like it's had a, a life. And again, the, the upholstery is modelled wonderfully as well. So if we go and have a look around, just jumping around the insides of the aeroplane. It's very, very good indeed. OK, so let's go and jump back through to the cockpit. So we'll just take the yoke off for a second so we can see what we're doing here. We're going to check the fuel shutoff valve first. So it's on both, which is good. It means we don't have to play games with keeping an eye on left and right tanks while we're flying. We'll go and push the mixture knob all the way in. So that's mapped to one of my controls, obviously propeller rpm is already on high we'll crack the throttle open and then we will turn the battery on <coughs> turn the beacon light on at that point i guess in the real world you would pop open the window which you can do in this and shout clear interestingly you can open the doors they work, work both sides everything works it's really really lovely and then <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, we're going to turn the um, magnetos to both and then on to start. So you can hear straight away the sound in it is spectacular. So let's just check the volume levels to make sure it's not draining me out. So it's looking okay. Okay, so we'll go and then turn the alternator on. So you can see as we at tick over the engine runs at just below a thousand rpm so we'll just push it forwards a little bit more there we go a thousand rpm and we're just waiting here for the oil pressure's good or temperature's good so i don't think it's the most accurate airplane in the world in terms of system modeling or behavior of the engine but it's it's pretty good okay so the switch for the Avionics is down here, for the radios I should say. So we're going to turn on the nav light while we're here, and the taxi light, we're about to taxi, we'll leave the pitot heat until we get to the runway. So just waiting for the GPS to fire up. We've got a, what have we got here, we got autopilot, we've got ADF, we've got transponder, so we're going to turn that on. So just while we're waiting for the GPS to fire up, I'll show you the route we're going to do. We're taking off from Duxford and we're going to fly via a few VORs and then into Wickham Air Park. So it should be a fairly straightforward route. OK, GPS has come alive. Just wait for it to capture satellites and we'll get the route programmed in. Shouldn't take too long at all. Just waiting for it to capture. Today would be good. taking a while isn't it there we go so we can now go to the flight plan screen and put the focus into the box turn the inside knob and we can put in the route i've got this written down so we don't have to keep looking at a little nav map so echo golf sierra uniform is duxford enter 
Then we're going to go to the Barkway VOR, which is Bravo Kilo Yankee. Bravo Kilo Yankee. Barkway, enter. United Kingdom, enter. The next one is Brookman's Park, which is Bravo Papa Kilo. So, Bravo Papa Kilo. Enter. Enter. Then on to the Bovingdon VOR, which is Bravo November November. Enter, enter. And then our destination is Echo Golf Tango Bravo for Wickham Air Park or Booker Airfield. So Echo Golf Tango Bravo. Enter. So there's our entire flight plan put in. So we can now see the magenta lines on the map. We can go and play games with this with changing the page on the page group to um, show the rose mode, which is quite useful sometimes because it gives you lots of data around the outside. Okay, this is going to be quite straightforward, isn't it, this flight? So we go also, we'll go and set the uh, the target altitude to 2,000 feet for the flight. Actually, let's go to 2,500. So we're going to try the aeroplane out a little bit, put it through its paces. So we will also... This it, this will be interesting, actually, to see if this is implemented in the same way as all the other Carinado aircraft, but we'll find that out en route. Um, OK, so we've done that. Let's go and set the heading bug to the runway direction at Duxford. So we're going to be taking off runway 24 left. So we want 240 degrees on the heading bug before we do anything. So we just spin this back round. Whoops. That's the acceleration in my Microsoft Flight Simulator happening there in the user interface. And we could get the first VOR tuned in as well. The uh, Barkway VOR is 116.25, so we can confirm that down here, 116.25. So let's go and switch the focus over to the navigation radios, 116.25, switch it to active. And we need to switch this away from GPS to VLOC. And there we go, we've got the HSI is alive now, and we can change the course. We, the course we want to be flying is 202 degrees into the the VOR. So there's 200 and 202 is going to be somewhere there. Okay. So before we get going, let's just have a little play, have a look in the tablet, see what's available in the aeroplane. So there's some static elements. So I'll just show you them while we're sat here. So if we go and turn them on, you can't turn them on while the engine's running, which is good to know. So I'm not going to go and shut the engine off now, but you get things like jocks, tie downs and uh, external power. So yeah, again, I can't turn it on while the engine's running or the tow bar. Um, pilot show hide, that's from the external point of view. So if I remove the pilots, we have a ghost plane. <laughs> if we put the pilots back, then we see them in there and it looks very well scaled, doesn't it? That They are really squished in as they would be in the real thing. Uh, we've got the, co the pilot doors can be controlled from the tablet as well and the baggage door. You can switch out the um, the radio kit. You can have <coughs> the PMS GTN 750 or the TDS. If we go and have a look, you can obviously um, there's some aircraft states built in to shortcut starting the aeroplane up. There's some checklists built in. They're quite good checklists for a change and they, I think, are replicated into the checklist. Yeah, so you get all the checklists in here as well. So if you do want to practice procedures, you can do that. So I'm just going to get rid of the tablet for the moment. So let's, before we get going, go and look outside. And let's go and roll the engine up a bit. So we're going to increase power just to listen to it. It's one of the best sounding aeroplanes I've heard in the simulator. Obviously I'm not going to run it flat out for very long on the ground. We're just running it up there so you could hear it. It sounds fantastic. OK, off the parking brake. And we'll begin taxiing. Let's just sit up. 
in the seat so we can see the taxi lines easily. Handling on the ground is fantastic. It's very easy to control. You see the AI has done a masterpiece here of putting several um, jets on the grass. So well done with that and good luck digging them out. So we're obviously we're at Duxford, so we've got the lineup of static museum aircraft, which is always great to look at as we go past. Keeps us busy on the taxi out to the runway. So a lot of um, GA planes in today as well. A couple of Booker Youngmeisters. Looks like an RV10 and another Youngmeister. There's the US Air Force Museum hangout. And we carry on down to runway 24. We shouldn't need flaps for takeoff. It's a long field here, it's a long hard runway, so we should have plenty of speed to take off without flaps. Just trying the brakes out there to see how much it dives. It does dive quite a lot, doesn't it? It won't turn when it's on the brakes, which is quite reassuring, really. So they've done some physics modelling there. It's quite clever. Quite a lot of right rudder to hold the centre line. Coming up through 60 knots, so it should be able to gently rotate and we're in the air. So you can see manifold pressure is absolutely fine. RPM we can cut back a little bit it's right up against the red line by default again it's not modeled wonderfully but it's kind of good enough so before we set off let's go and do a circuit of Goodwood so the Goodwood scenery corrects lots of things like the the road junctions the nearby buildings very, very good. So we're just going to do a circuit around what, an orbit around the airfield before we go on our way. So let's go and have a look at this from outside. So obviously the, the party piece of the 182 as against the or the 182RG is what I'm about to show you which is why I've come outside so we're going to raise the gear and watch the animations very nice you'll also notice that it has cowl flaps down here so let's see if we have control of those inside the aeroplane so we'll go and look down here you can see cow flaps if we close them and we'll look inside you see they've then closed very good quite a sleek aeroplane isn't it so let's go and have some fun and games with following the route on our VOR so going towards the direction we want to be going, intercepting the VOR, or intercepting the course I should say. So it should roughly align with the GPS as well, so we'll fly about a 20 or 30 degree track across. 
So just coming up through 2,000 feet. Let's try the autopilot out as well. So autopilot on. If we go nav mode, see it's not going to capture on its own. It's just going to holding roll. So what we'll do is go heading mode, then go nav. It's going to do it now. Look, it's close enough. So it's actually turning to a, a steeper angle. It usually goes about 30 degrees on the intercept. Coming up to two and a half thousand feet, so it should be looking to wind out the vertical speed if the altitude is going to work. And it has. So I didn't have to arm the altitude change, which was interesting. It just took it. Okay, so according to the GPS, we've got four miles to run, we're just under until we get to the first waypoint. So if we have a look on the map to see where we are, so we're just coming back in on the route. So the next VOR will be the Brookmans Park VOR, Warman 750. So let's try that out. So 117 should be the same course. Five zero. So we'll switch that to active. I've got the wrong frequency, haven't I? One one seven five zero. Might have a little bit more luck. There we go. So we've got we're going two. We're seventeen miles away, and we're on track. Okay, so let's have a look at this from outside. Now it's on autopilot, we can have a little look at the aeroplane. We didn't turn on the pitot heat, it's a hot day anyway. But let's go and turn that on just to see it working. So it's typical of the Carinado aeroplanes really, it's quite simplified in terms of behaviour. But that's no bad thing sometimes, not everybody wants a a complicated aeroplane to try to wrestle around the skies do they so let's just have a little look at this to see where everything is manifold pressure is good rpm is good oil temperature is getting hot but it's a hot day oil pressure is quite high fuel is good both tanks so altitude holding two and a half thousand feet rather easily He says as it wanders uphill 100 feet. <laughs> so let's go and see about changing altitude and see how it behaves on this autopilot. So if we say three and a half thousand and arm that, what will it do? So at the moment it's descending. So presumably we need to go and tell this. It's always a bit of a mystery with the Carinado aeroplanes exactly how they'll, they'll have implemented the autopilot functionality. So if you arm you then need to go and use the up and down buttons so it won't go and jump towards near 500 feet towards 500 feet a minute sorry towards your target which lots of aeroplanes do but this one doesn't. It's wavering around a fair bit, trying to attain that. There's a little bit of turbulence, I think. It's quite a windy day. Well, it's windy in places, let's put it that way. But as you can see, beautiful day in the UK today. Hardly any clouds in the sky. Perfect day to try an aeroplane out. So let's go and zoom out on this. See how far away we are. So Brookman's Park It's over in the distance. So yeah. This is the Cessna 182. It's pretty quick, isn't it, as well? Look, we're easily charging along 120 knots without really trying, and we're climbing. So we'll probably get to 140 knots in cruise without pushing it. Very impressed.
So let's confirm that behaviour of the autopilot. We just come up to three and a half thousand feet. Look, and it's wound out the climb right now. So we'll bring that back down now to two thousand five hundred and click arm. And now it's gone to vertical speed, so we can say how to get there straight away. So once you understand what it's going to do in the functionality of this particular autopilot, it's absolutely fine. So we're going quite fast, obviously, because we're going downhill. So I'm going to pull the throttle back a little bit. You can see the exhaust gas temperature dropped right off there as I went to 50% throttle. Manifold pressure is right at the bottom end of the green range now. RPM's obviously staying the same. Coming back down towards 3,000 feet. We are being thrown around quite considerably by the weather, aren't we? So while we're flying along, I think it's worth having a look at this. So I'm going to scoot up in the air. Look at the quality of the rendering of this thing. It's absolutely incredible. Every little detail has really been done to quite some level. Even things you can't see look like a spring there on that attachment. Floodlights. Even the, the I know I mention this sometimes with different aeroplanes. Even the heads of screws have been done really, really nicely. And there's different types of screw all over the place. It's it's very, very good. Even yeah, the the um, resolution of the textures is something else. And you can get right up next to these small stickers and read them. Same with all the instruments really. So you can see the autopilot is working overtime. Standard airworthiness certificate. Be worth jumping down on the floor to see if we can read that. So let's have a look. Just maneuvering the camera with the keyboard. That's quite cool, isn't it? You can actually see it very, very closely. That's the resolution of this thing. It's very cool. My word. Can you even see the signature. You can see they've even gone to the lengths of making the curves on the the straps nice and neat and tidy. I love the bits of wear and tear around the place as well. It's very cool. So you've got the, um, the jacks for the headsets in the back as well. Okay, where are we? We're just coming up to Brookman's Park, so we're off to Bovingdon next, so we need to figure that out quickly. So Bovingdon is 11375, 265 degrees on the heading. So what was it again? 11375. So we go 11375, switch it to active. 265 on the heading. So 240, 250, 260, 265 degrees. And if we go to nav mode on the autopilot, it should very smartly turn right. Because we've already run over the top. That, that amazes me actually. I didn't expect that to work. Because we'd already overshot the localizer. It's now I'm amazed it's turning back for us. Normally, some of these older autopilots, if they're modelled accurately, you have to put it on the intercept course yourself. Look at the aeroplane being thrown around. So I'm not running FS realistic, this is just the aeroplane being thrown around. So we're coming back towards that 265, if I've got it right. Not quite. There's the 265 degree radial into Bovingdon. So 15 miles to go until Bovingdon. 
yeah, I'm really, really taken up with this of just how good it is. It's really being pitched around by the wind, isn't it? I didn't think it was that windy a day. Absolutely looks the part though, doesn't it? And it sounds fantastic. Let's go and have a look underneath at that. Look at the weathering. It's very, very good. Can't fault anything with it really. Oh, hello. Sim's just frozen. That'll be the um, whatever the RAM issue is with this motherboard and this simulator. It will unfreeze itself in a few seconds. If you've seen my previous videos, this is a common occurrence. Yeah, you can you see the scenery just changed there? Something broke in the communication with the servers, I think. Worth having a look at those lights to see them all lit up. So we've got the port light there, starboard light, got the beacon light up on top of the tail flashing away. <laughs> it's not pitching around. God, I bet the pilot's going to feel sick after this flight. So we're almost there. About 20 miles to go. tempting to cut off and go visually into Elstree, isn't it? Just for a bit of fun. Should we do that instead? It's not as far, is it? So, if we wanted to go to Elstree from, say, here, if we measure and say 195 degrees, so if we go to back to heading mode and we'll say we want to go 180, 195 degrees, please. And the sim has frozen again. I haven't seen it freeze twice in the same flight in some time. I think I know what's causing it as well. I've got the We Love VFR add-on installed at the moment, so it's an extra amount of detail in terms of pylons, radio masts, and I've also got the power lines add-on installed, so we've got all the um, telegraph wires. Okay, so let's go and start descending. We'll go to 1500 feet. So we'll arm that. It goes to vertical speed, and we just tell it we'll come down at 1000 feet a minute, please. And we should get visuals. I think this is probably over here. Yeah, that would make sense. That's Elstree. So we just need to figure out, looking at the wind on the ground, let's get the measurement from the ground rather than look at the map. On the ground it's 080 degrees 8 knots. So it's coming in from this side, so we're going to land on runway 08. So we will loop around the, the back of the airfield. Or we could cut off early, do a left pan in, yeah, let's do that. So I'll turn the autopilot off. So we are in control now. So continue descending. 500 feet a minute will be fine. So we'll go and reopen those cowl flaps. So you get a klaxon with this one when you reduce the throttle without the gear down. So it's something to keep in mind. There's a lot of pylons around, aren't there? I have to be mindful now because I've got the the, um, the power lines out on installed. So if we got close enough, you would see all the wires. You can see them. Look, if you look carefully, if I stop turning, you can just see all the wires down there. So you need to be much more careful. Also need to keep an eye out for radio masts you know, for mobile phone masts. So there's the airfield runway at L Street. So we'll just sit back down in the cockpit so we have an easier view of that. So 
losing speed as we go. Okay, should we look outside while we bring the gear down just to see it happen? It comes down quite quickly, doesn't it? So how much is that affecting speed? It's not really that draggy with the wheels, is it? Obviously we can reduce throttle now without any warnings. So we'll start turning in. Go to the first stage of flaps. It's always a bit of a bugbear with me. I need to get head tracking really, so then I can see easily out underneath the wing when you're turning. There's the runway. lump I'm just slightly over speeding the flaps here I have to be quite careful part of, the, part of that is the headwind Wind has suddenly changed as we got close to the runway. Just have to avoid this hump just before the runway. So you, I don't know if you noticed that the aeroplane suddenly started dropping. So the wind slackened off obviously as we got near the ground. So we didn't have that headwind and lost a lot of lift. There we go, we're down. So the flaps can come up. On. It's quite a busy airfield here, isn't it? It's a nice helicopter there. So we'll go over near the control tower, I guess, to park up. We'll avoid this van that's intentionally seems to have gotten in the way. So we're going to park here at HM Customs so we can get the customs to come and check our aeroplane out. Okay, parking brake on, and pull the mixture back, and the engine's just run out of fuel, there it goes. So, magnetos off, Peter heat off, nav off, beacon off, taxi light off, and there's not a lot to do in this aeroplane, is there? Turn the avionics off and then battery and alternator off. And we're good to go. So obviously, as we saw earlier, you can open the doors and the windows. It'd be a nice opportunity now, actually, to see the static elements now we've parked up. So if we go back through the tablet, let's go and turn those static elements on, the external power supply, 
and the tow bar as well. We'll turn the ah well we while we're sat on the ground then with those on you can't turn the pilot and co-pilot on, which makes sense. Um let's open the baggage door as well. Can we do that? Yes we can. So let's have a look. It's very good, isn't it? Very, very good. So let's put the cover on the um the pitot tube as well and on the engine. Very cool. I like that. Okay, so yes, that's the Cessna 182 RG Mark II from Caronado in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Yes, it's not study level, but it looks wonderful. It's easy to fly. It's easy to handle on the ground. And it has an autopilot, so it's. Got, I think it's going to become a very, very popular plane for flying around the place, basically, you know, for going exploring. So hopefully you enjoyed that. And I'll see you again soon. Take care.